Hey everyone, this is series creator Brandon Greer, and I just wanted to let you guys know about another amazing podcast that you guys should definitely check out. Today's highlighted podcast is none other than Sirenicide, created by my good friend Johnny Stitches, who also writes, produces, and stars in it. It is a horror audio drama series, and it is absolutely terrifying. You'll never see ambulances or doctors or really any kind of medical equipment the same way ever again. If you doubt me, here's just a little taste. My name is Matthew Finnis, and something terrible has happened to me. An event that has sent me traveling down a road I was never meant to be on. This is a story of what lies in the shadows of Morston, Texas. <coughs> Siren Aside is a serialized horror drama. The criminal factions and dark government agencies are just the start of the malevolence that roams the streets of this macabre city. The tales in Sirenicide tap into the fear and lore that envelop what most would consider to be fiction. So uncover the dark secrets, evil murders, supernatural experiences, and mysterious doctors awaiting in this modern epic. Binge the show for free right now on your favorite podcast platform or at Sirenicide.com. My name is Howard Blank. I was just an average Joe until I was shot in the head. The bullet lodged in my brain, inflicting me with amnesia. Now I'm a detective for Global Police Incorporated, a top secret agency dedicated to protecting the world from evil. Together with my partner, Johnny Taco, I'm looking for a missing person. The man I once was. Christ, it's hotter than the inside of Linda B. Johnson's armpits out there. And trust me, I'd know. I don't know, Mr. Blank. There's something about the Florida air that just feels right. (laughs) Though I've had enough of the mosquitoes. Let it happen, Johnny. How else will they clone you when you die? That's just stupid. Howard, Johnny, isn't it a good morning? Isn't the air fresher? And the coffee warmer? Isn't the microfilm big enough to see without glasses? Well, Miss Dallinickel, did you get to assassinate another Soviet agent? No, I'm pushing Sergei to the end of the week. Johnny, do you remember that rumor I heard? (gasps) The rumor! Yes, the rumor! What rumor? It might be true! What might be true? The rumor! If somebody doesn't tell me what the rumor is, I'm turning off the air conditioner. I overheard last week that Grant Grizzly wants to make a woman the chief of Global Police Incorporated. And since I do all the work of the chief, surely I must be a top candidate. A woman as chief? Ridiculous. That we've had to wait this long. You're sure to get it, Miss Dollarnickel. In order to make sure you're extra special lucky, Miss Dollarnickel, I wore my lucky shirt today. This is the shirt I was wearing when I had my very first kiss. Didn't I give you that shirt for Christmas? Shh! Mr. Grizzly, good morning. Can I fetch your coffee? Now, now, Penny. There will be no need for fetching me coffee anymore. Not in your new position. Cross your fingers, Mr. Blank. No, no, Mr. Blank, you're flipping in the bird. Sorry, Johnny. Old habit. Penny Dollar Nickel. From now on, you will be Global Police Incorporated's chief. Oh, thank you, sir. I've dreamed of this moment for years. Executive Secretary. Come again. Penny, you have shown yourself to be a capable employee that can act as the second in command to the new chief of GPI. Begging your pardon, sir, but I was already second in command. The position comes with a pay raise. Oh. Of one cent per hour. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Grizzly, but if Dollar Nickel is out, then who's the new chief? Yeah, I thought it was going to be a woman. And Miss Dolanickel is the only woman we know. We really need to bring more diversity to this agency. I brought someone from my studios. What she does not have in qualifications, experience, or work ethic, she makes up for in being technically related to me. Everyone, say hello to your new chief, Fairy Princess Thimble. Um, where? Down here! You're six inches tall. That's so cute. Aren't you a cutie? Aren't you so cute? Oh, don't you call me cute, fatso. Why does everyone think I'm fat? I'm not fat, just tall. 
Princess Thimble will be giving you your new assignments now. But, sir... Save it for Thimble, please. I put off hibernation all winter, and I need to catch up on my sleeping beauty. <clears throat> I mean my beauty sleep. Goodbye. Miss Dollar Nickel, your first assignment will be sending letters to each of our detectives, notifying them that I am the new chief. And personalize them, will you? I hate that cookie-cutter corporate newsletter crap. But we employ hundreds of detectives, and I can't locate three quarters of them. And get me a smaller typewriter. I'm exhausted from jumping on all the keys. Off you go. I know exactly what I'll do with that typewriter. It's good to meet you and all, but we have a mission in Hong Kong. Oh, not so fast, Detective Taco. I wanted to talk to you and Detective Blank about your partnership. How oh, we're GPI's best detectives? That was what I wanted to talk to you about. Last year, you only solved six cases. Compare that to the Smarty Boys and Lancy Fu, who solved 24. Four solo cases and one crossover case last summer. Not to mention Thesaurus Green and all his two-minute mysteries. We fought Nazis. They claimed they were just practicing free speech. They were trying to take over the world. Oh, and that can't be covered by the pursuit of happiness? We saved the GPI headquarters. Well, it got destroyed, but we saved everyone in it. Except for the Rowdy Boys. But we caught all the bad guys. Well, Zhang, Aida, and Ozzy got away, but we learned a valuable lesson about friendship. Oh, I have no choice but to split the two of you up. The chief always said that the two of us were his best detectives. He told all his detectives that. But he said that even when we weren't around to hear him. If you weren't around to hear him, how did you know what he said? Johnny, take over. This is ridiculous. The two of us may not churn out cases, but we get the job done. We fought mummies, ghosts, internalized prejudice. Oh, you also attacked Orson Welles, let Ozzy Possum get kidnapped by Soviets, and ensure Dr. Zheng countersued us with a police brutality case. Oh yeah? What about that time we caught a murderer who turned his victim into a ceramic vase? Mr. Blank, that was an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Nonetheless, Detective Blank, I'm partnering you with Detective Connor Connors. Detective Connor Connors, reporting for duty. Johnny, that man is gorgeous. Focus, they're splitting us up. I know, but humana, humana, humana. One more Honeymooners reference out of you, and it's bang, pow, straight to the moon. I'm glad to meet the famous Howard Blank for the first time. You're much taller in person. And you're incredibly muscular. You look like you could bench press Johnny. I could show you right now. Get your hands off me. Your mission brief is in this envelope. Oh, be careful. It took me three hours to get myself unstuck from the seal. Is this really happening, Mr. Blank? Are you abandoning me for Detective Connors? Hey, remember the time you partnered up with another detective and kept going on and on about how amazing of a partner she was? She turned out to be Alamo San Antonio. You said you missed her just two weeks ago. And that's why I was mad at you last Christmas. Good day, Johnny. We'll be flying out to Iraq. And we'll be bunging together, buddy. Have to wrestle you for the bed, though. Nonsense. We're both manly men. We can sleep in a bed together and still act professionally. This is going to be the best case ever. You were like a father to me, Mr. Blank. Screw you, Johnny. So who's my new partner? I'm taking you off duty and giving you a job here in the office. Wait, what? That's not fair. Your injuries from the destruction of the NYC HQ and your evolutionary acclimation to the Florida climate makes this a better option for you. Plus you type 52 words a minute. I guess so. I just never thought of myself as an office worker. I like to work with my hands. Oh, don't worry. I'll put those hands of yours to good work. Johnny. (laughs) Mrs. Thimble, why are you hovering so close to my face? It's Miss Thimble, Johnny. And if there's anything you need, anything, don't be afraid to come to me. (laughs) Um, I don't like, I don't like...
The plot thickens. Thanks for giving me the window seat. Johnny always hogs it for himself. I'm a kid from Manhattan. I haven't seen the world yet. Well, tough nuts. Now I can see the wing. I've been reading the mission brief. It wasn't a page turner. So I highlighted the important things. Johnny always makes me read the entire report, even though the bullet in my head messed up my reading. At least, that's what I tell him. You smoke cigars? It's the manly way to smoke. Cigarettes are for women. Why else would they be called cigarettes? Right, of course. What was that? Packs of cigarettes falling somewhere, I don't know. Um, the report. In the land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, a mysterious garden has popped up overnight. Find the perpetrator and assess if they're a threat. Ha, <laughs> garden, that's not so bad. So, Connor, you're a Rock Hudson type, right? I like to think I'm a Bill Pearl. I like the form of a muscular man. Oh. It's the form I try to strive for. Oh. But I do like to see all those men sweating, working out, building up their bodies. Oh. Because it drives me to be stronger than them. Oh. I could see myself falling for a man. Oh. If there were no women left on the planet. <laughs> Am I right, Howard? Ah, uh-huh, yes. Us manly men in our fragile backs. Perhaps in Iraq we could scout out some of the local ladies. Maybe take some back to the safe house, if you know what I'm saying. Right, right. I like women, too. Women are nice. They're fun. Just wish I could find a woman with a body like yours, Connor. You should meet my sister. Johnny, Miss Thimble requests your presence. Oh, no, not again. Johnny, does Princess Thimble make you feel uncomfortable? Does she make me uncomfortable? She put me in this big office on my first day when Mrs. Emerson has worked here for 30 years and she's stuck in a cubicle so small her arthritis is acting up again. I think I'm only getting this office because Miss Thimble has the hots for me. Those who manipulate others to gain power should be punished. I agree with that. Which is why I need you to seduce Miss Thimble for me. What? If she gets in trouble for being involved with one of her subordinates, Mr. Grizzly will put me in charge of GPI. And I'll put you and Howard back together. I don't know, Miss Dollar Nickel. She makes me so uncomfortable. And you didn't make me feel uncomfortable? Oh, Miss Dollar Nickel, I'm so sorry. I should have controlled what I said better. I was being a real jerk. It's okay. We've crossed that bridge in our relationship. We're good friends now. Which is why I have to ask you to help me. And I I can help you too. In a way that is completely appropriate and befitting of a friendship. Buy me some beer? I'll buy you champagne if you pull this off. Okay, okay. But I'm a Takosaurus and she's a fairy. How does that work? And how would it have worked out with you and me? Well, it's a little embarrassing, but... And then I would take the orange and... Johnny, get the bleach and a drill. We're going to force that image out of my head. Why is there a kookaburra in this garden? Everybody knows they live at the zoo. This isn't a garden, it's a jungle. The first clearing we find, we make base camp. And if we encounter gunfire, we don't engage. We get to the choppers! What choppers? It's a saying like, I'll be back. Or, come with me if you want to live. Everybody says it. I'm pretty sure it's just you. Whatever. Here's a machete. Let's hack our way through this jungle. Ow! Did that plant just say, ow? Oh, good. It's not the voice in my head again. The voice in your head? It was just our imaginations. Let's keep going. Ow! I swear to God, that plant just said, ow. That it did. Let me try something. A feather? Watch this. Tickle, 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 tickle. It's ticklish. <laughs> there can only be one conclusion. These plants 
are alive. Of course they're alive. That's the point of being a plant. Well, I didn't know I brought Johnny on this trip. You ingrates! You damaged my plants! Get down. We'll hide in this nest of vines. Good idea. Wait. Bad idea. The vines are moving. They're snakes. They can't be snakes. Look at them. They look nothing like snakes. Vines don't just move. At least not like that. Look, I'd know a snake if I saw one. Ow! Okay, that one's a snake. But the rest are vines. And now that you are my prisoners, let me share the one rule of the Garden of Hemlock. Walk on the grass, and it walks on you. <laughs> Miss Dollar Nickel, I'm so nervous. Just go in there, turn on your charm, and stop once I get the pictures. Or, you know, when you feel uncomfortable, but let's prioritize the first. Wait, pictures? Go get them, Tiger. Miss, Miss Thimble? Uh, um, I, I just... Burning the midnight oil, Johnny? Uh, you know me. <laughs> well... I've been feeling a burning sensation for you. Oh! Oh. <laughs> uh, Connor, was it as good for you as it was for me? If you're asking if being strung up by vines was good, then no. I hated it. Wait, what? <laughs> Oh, crap! These nuts are too tight. I used to be a Girl Scout. I know every type of knot there is. The minute I get down from here, I'll give you a good smack in the mouth. I'm not afraid to hit a woman. Jesus, Connor, cool it. Listen, lady, I don't know who you are, but if you let me down, I'll only throw you in prison for the rest of your life. Can a prison hold the strong oak tree? Or can it tame the Venus flytrap? It cannot even stop the persistent mushroom from growing through its cracks. Oh no, we've got a talker. Get ready to hear an evil plan speech. I love this. This is always my favorite part. I am the suffering plants of the world. I am the corn covered in mold. I am the rainforest burning it to the ground. I'm the ugly fruit that gets thrown out in the supermarkets. I am Hemlock! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's the evil plan? Don't you let him steamroll your sister. Take your time. It is ironic that men come to stop me. For it is men that are destroying the world. Pumping toxins into the air. Deforesting forests. Killing the flora of the world with your greed. Money doesn't grow on trees. You... you make money out of trees. That's literally what you do. So what are you going to do to the world now? Screw that. What's your origin story? Blank! I like origin stories. Ten years ago, I fell into a pit of radioactive poison hemlock. Unfortunately, it gave me cancer. So I turned to plant-based medicine to cure it. And then I got a bacterial infection. So I devoted my life to Anthea, the goddess of plants. And she took away my cancer and gave me some antibiotics. And in return, she gave me the power to make plants grow faster through the use of plant pheromones. Now I can turn the planet into a beautiful jungle paradise and save the Earth. Oh God, Connor, she's gonna seduce us into her slaves with our plant pheromones. I said they were plant pheromones. If I could control you, they would be human pheromones. But I have plant pheromones. Blank seduction. That's a great idea. Hemlock, isn't it? You know, under these vines are rippling fine muscles, and they can be yours for as long as you want if you promise to let Howard and I go. You're not my type. Howard here is quite a handsome man. In the face, mostly. Well, the eyes. Well, somewhere, I, I guess. Don't pimp me out. I can do my own pimping. Hi, Howard Blank. You idiots. I'm a lesbian. I'm not interested in either one of you. I'm in a relationship with the villainous mime girl. And I'm the happiest I've ever been. Wait! A mime? Sounds like she's not great conversation. 
to have a successful relationship, your partner doesn't have to talk much. Or at all. It's fine. We love each other. She said without me, she would feel trapped in an invisible box. If you're a lesbian, why did you dress up nice for us? This? This leafy leotard is what I always wear. I like it because I made it myself. I don't like your insinuations. Come on! You're only a lesbian because you haven't met the right man yet. Hold on now, that's not something you can say. Oh, did GPI suddenly become the words police? I can say what I want. If she says she's a lesbian, by heck she is one. And for your information, I didn't wear this trench coat for you. I wore it because I like it. Wait, why would you wear a coat for me? Because, well, because... You're gay? No, I'm bisexual, thank you. Oh my god. Were you there for the Mattachine Society and Daughters of Belitis Social in L.A.? Yes, I was. I thought I recognized you. Well, I look different now. My friend Roger did my mascara. I normally never wear makeup, but I thought, what the heck, I'm among friends here. Men don't wear makeup. They shouldn't. That's what women wear to make themselves pretty for men. Now that is just Can't the you most see you're being unreasonable thing I've ever here? heard. It's true! Enough distractions. Tonight, I will expand my garden at the setting of the sacred sun. I don't have a secret sun. And he's definitely not living in California with his Mexican mother. What a very specific denial of something no one accused you of. As soon as the sun sets, I will feed you to my giant Venus man traps. Except you, trench coat man. I think you're cool. I'll keep you around as my personal slave! Hear that? She thinks I'm cool. Good for you. I'm starting to think I have no chance with her. Of course you don't. How can you think that you have a chance with someone who shows no attraction to you at all? How could you think the same of me? I, well... Well, good luck getting out of these vines without my trusty Swiss Army knife. That's not a Swiss Army knife. That's a banana. Why does this keep happening to me? So, Johnny, how do you like that office I gave you? It's nice. I could have done without the security camera pointing at my butt, though. Come on, Johnny. That's just a funny office prank. You need to lighten up a little. Come here. I'll give you a massage. Um, okay. How does this feel? Like I'm being needed by a praying mantis. I've been needing this and praying for this for a long time. <gasps> Did you hear something? Um, when I cough, it sounds exactly like a camera flash. Okay, really, Johnny? <laughs> Calm down, you're so tense. You know, Johnny, you're a very handsome fella. <laughs> a lot of other people in the office don't notice that kind of thing. But I do. I don't know. I turned some heads when I split my pants yesterday. I like a guy who wears underwear with hearts on them. Okay, look. I hadn't done my laundry. <laughs> you know, I think of you as a special employee, Johnny. <laughs> I have this little place, this timeshare under the sea. Maybe you'd like to come. Think about it like a little getaway from work. Just you and me and 600 mermaids all watching us. I can't do this. Miss Thimble, this is just inappropriate. I don't like you. I mean, I like you as a boss. Well, actually, I don't. You split up me and my friend, and you make me feel weird. And not in that good weird way like when I met Marilyn Monroe, but in that bad weird way like when I met Vice President Nixon. I just want to work without having you constantly, literally hovering over me. I hope you can understand that. Oh, I understand. I understand that you are just a prude, flaunting yourself in front of me, wearing tight pants, showing off your forearms, wearing pink shirts. What do pink shirts have to do with anything? I'm a fairy. I like pink. But you'll rue the 
day that you rejected me. I'll make your life miserable. Oh, so miserable. You'll feel sorry for ever telling me no. That's not fair. Uh, first of all, I'm demoting you. You are now officially Junior Detective Johnny Taco. Junior Detective? That's not even a rank. It's what we call the kids we take pictures with at the hospital. Give me your badge. Here's your replacement. Oh, be careful with it. It's a cookie wrapped in aluminum foil. Fine. Take my badge. Demote me. But remember that you are just a petty little person with a petty little life with two petty little wings full of petty little lust. And worst of all, Miss Thimble, worst of all for you, you ain't getting none of this. Good night. Johnny, that was brilliant. Now, could you do it again? I had my thumb over the lens. You know what, Miss Dolanickel? I thought we were friends, but this whole time, you've been using me. Johnny, I know this is difficult, but it's for the greater good. I'm more qualified to be chief. You're not more qualified. You're just as mean and manipulative as Miss Thimble. And all last year, you treated Mr. Blank just like she treated me. I was under orders to get close to him. Yeah, yeah, you can justify doing the wrong thing if you say you're doing it for the right reason. But that doesn't change that it's wrong. Miss Dolanickel, you're a bad person. I never claimed I wasn't. If you have any respect for me, if you consider me your friend, then you won't show those pictures to anyone. She is mistreating you, Johnny. I know, and I hate it. But I don't want anyone to know about this because it's embarrassing, and at least that part of it is over. For now. Please, Miss Dolanickel. I'm... I'm sorry, Johnny. Then prove it. Ugh. I hope you're happy. No, I'm not. Who needs him? I have letters to write. Who's up next? Oh, well, it figures. Attention. Detective Jonathan Taco. Hmm. Key is sticking. We choose to inform you that... <clears throat> we choose to inform you that... Stupid typewriter! Why can't you do what I tell you? Johnny. Oh, Johnny, I'm so sorry. Now I shall plunge my feet into the fertile soil of the earth and bring forth a new world run by the true creators of the world, plants! Soon the plants will take back the world and I, Hemlock, will have saved the planet. Wait, where's the burly guy? He got loose somehow. How did he get loose? Look, we may have this kind of cool buddy thing going on here, but I'm still the good guy. I'm saving the planet! Yeah, and I like mowing my lawn, so if I were to tell you that he's covered himself in mud and is sneaking up behind you with his machete, then that would be cheating. <gasps> he's not behind me. Sorry, that was his shadow. He's in front of you. I'll be front! Get him, Hemlock! Whose side are you on? I swing both ways. Get him, my plants! These Ow. plants can't stop me now that I'm ready Ow. for them! Ow! Ow! My plants! You imbecile! Stop hurting them! You know, I could help, but I'm pretty tied up at the moment. <laughs> tied up. Plants, release him! Ooh, right on my keys. All right. Now that was a warning shot. Nobody move and nobody gets hurt. Except for that kookaburra. Now, when you're like me and have an argumentative dinosaur companion, you tend to go to mediation classes. And you tend to pick up on a few things. Like how sometimes you have to give up what you want to get what you want. I think it's stupid, but I'm the guy with the guns, so I guess that makes me the mediator. You men and your guns. Put away the villain dialogue and start peacefully compromising or I'll shoot you. Well, I guess that I could fight deforestation in the rainforest of the world by making the plants grow there. That way I don't take over the entire world with plants. But I still fight the dreadful cause of man's influence on our planet. Connors? I arrest both of you. I get the girl, and I save the day. If he's not compromising, 
I'm still taking over the world. Come on, Connors. This has to be a two-way street. No, this works the way I want it to. You know why? Because I'm a man living on Mars, living inside of a simulation where I'm a detective on another version of Earth. This is my fantasy, and both of you are ruining it with your gayness. This may be calling the kettle a pot, but you're crazy. I'll prove it. See this giant Venus flytrap? I'll walk right into it, and I'll wake up on Mars. Wait, don't. You'll die. Watch me. Any moment now, I'll be back on Mars, living my life again. Oh no! I'm not waking up! Help me! I'm in horrible pain! Ah! Ah! Connors! It's no use. He's already dead. What a horrible way to go. I know. My poor flytrap is going to have such bad indigestion. I guess the moral of this story is, if someone doesn't like you, it's best to leave them alone. No, the real moral of the story is that men are trash. I don't like that moral. All men are trash except Howard Blank? That I can agree with. This has been Codename Blank, starring Ty Anderson, Rachel Boyd, Brandon Greer, Mai Lee, Jess Paul, and introducing Elsie Seastrand. Written and directed by Brandon Greer. Produced and edited by Rachel Boyd. Music by Brandon Greer. Episode poster by Ryan Nish. All elements of Codename Blank are copyright 2020 by the Cryptic 27 Studios. Any reproduction of this work is prohibited unless authorized by the creators of this podcast. Howard and Johnny will return in Deadly Day at Grizzly World. 